Two hunters that use primitive weapons to slay their quarry. Two hunters that wear parts of their victims' anatomies as trophies. One is arguably Earth's greatest hunter, where the other is the most prolific killer from another galaxy. However, if these two apex predators met, who would prove victorious? Join me as Craven the Hunter goes head to head with the feral predator in Schizophrenix Face Off. Welcome to the jungle. Hello and welcome to another Face Off Battle, the playlist on my channel that puts two fictional characters against each other in a one on one fight. As always, I will explore each combatant's strengths and weaknesses across my 10 categories, awarding them a mark out of 10 for each round before totaling the scores and announcing my winner. In this video, Craven the Hunter from Marvel Comics will take on the Feral Predator from the movie Prey. Obviously, my point of reference for the Yautja will be from its respective movie, however, for Craven, I will mainly focus on the comic Craven's Last Hunt as well as some others. With all that clarified, let's introduce our combatants. In the blue corner, we have the Feral Predator, a more primitive Yautja that conducted a hunt within Lawton, Oklahoma during 1719. During its time on Earth, this predator ascended the food chain and left a path of destruction which included a rattlesnake, a wolf, a grizzly bear, a bunch of Comanche warriors, and a group of nasty trappers before it encountered the deadliest prey of them all, a small person with an axe. Yes, despite mastering space travel and utilizing a range of advanced technology, this alien assassin was outsmarted by Naru, the Comanche healer, who caused it to shoot itself in the head with its own weapon. This was perhaps the first time a predator committed accidental suicide on the big screen. In the red corner, we have his opponent, Craven the Hunter. I am Craven, the world's greatest hunter. Sergei Kravinov was born and raised in Russia during the Russian Revolution as the aristocracy came to an end. After finding employment in Africa, Kravinov developed as a decorated big game hunter and even took down deadly animals with his bare hands. If that was not impressive enough, Kravinov's hunting prowess intensified when he met voodoo witch doctor Calypso, who gave him a herbal potion which enhanced his physical powers and the legend of Kraven the Hunter was born. With his newfound powers, fur coat and moustache, Kraven would dedicate himself to hunting the amazing Spider-Man. With our fighters introduced, it's time to begin the face-off. Let the hunt begin. Despite being an enhanced human, Craven's physical traits, although impressive, are by no means unachievable for a regular person. He stands six feet tall and weighs a muscular 235 pounds. Although I think he should get bonus points for that epic moustache. Conversely, the feral stands over 7 feet tall and weighs more than 400 pounds of solid muscle. Furthermore, he possesses sharp claws, mandibles and jaws adapted to crushing bone. As a result, I have to award the opening round to the feral predator. It takes the win by 10 points to 8. We all wait for a truly worthy of my talents. I've waited so long for this moment. Now that you are within my trap, we can begin our glorious contest of strength. Both combatants showed impressive feats of strength, and this will be a difficult round to judge. The most obvious display of might for the feral was when it went up against a grizzly, and it seemed to match it for strength as they wrestled for control. Ultimately, this Yautja defeated the bear and pressed its 800 pounds of bulk over its head in an impressive display of physical power. However, Craven has matched the might of beings that are stronger than bears, like Spider-Man, on several occasions. Craven is also said to be capable of lifting approximately two tons, which is the weight of a rhino, or around four times what the bear weighed in prey. Logically, we are led to believe that Craven is therefore stronger than the feral, however, we need to analyse the details more closely to be sure. Considering that the feral lifted the dead weight of an animal weighing upwards of 800 pounds, it is entirely possible that the predator could lift more on something that was designed to be lifted like a barbell. Gripping the mass of a bear would require immense power, which is why I believe the feral stabbed the bear with its wrist blade before lifting it, which eliminates the grip element. 
However, I do still believe that the weight of the bear does not represent the predator's one rep max, and it could lift more, but could it lift the equivalent of two tons or four grizzly bears overhead? Well, I think it could deadlift that amount, but perhaps pressing it overhead is a stretch. With all things considered, I personally believe that Craven is the stronger of the two, but only just. Craven narrowly takes the win by 10 points to 9. During the events of Prey, the Feral demonstrated that it was as fast and agile as any other Yautja in the cinematic universe. It could traverse the trees like a primate and run after its prey like a racehorse. Likewise, Craven also possesses superhuman speed, agility and reflexes. Sergei can match a cheetah for speed and run at 60 miles per hour for short bursts. Furthermore, Craven is agile enough to pursue Spider-Man and his reflexes have seen him evade lightning bolts from Storm and Black Panther's projectile attacks. Although this is another close encounter, I feel that Craven has the edge and outmaneuvers the Feral in this 10-9 round. Such speed, such precision! Both characters have displayed that they can take serious punishment before succumbing to injuries. Craven's muscles generate less lactic acid than elite level athletes, meaning that he can perform for several hours at peak capacity. Furthermore, his jungle potions have slowed his aging process, meaning that he resembles a 30-year-old despite being over 70 years of age. Finally, Craven has proven that he is durable enough to sustain great blunt force trauma and continuous strikes from Spider-Man. Just look at the shockwaves across his face from that punch. During the events of Prey, one thing that was abundantly clear was how tough the feral was. It endured being bitten by a wolf, being mauled by a bear, getting stabbed by spears, catching his foot in a bear trap, being shot with muskets, impaled with his spear, shot with arrows, shot at point-blank range by a flintlock pistol, stabbed repeatedly, have its arm severed, have its mandible torn off before falling into a bog. Ultimately, this Yautja was only killed when it was shot in the head by its own spear weapon. Due to this, I will award round 4 to the Feral as it demonstrated such a high threshold for pain. It narrowly takes the victory by 10 points to 9. Plan to end combat. The Feral showcased its fight style on many occasions throughout Prey as it seemed to prefer close quarters combat as opposed to stealth attacks. It did exhibit some skills such as parrying strikes before countering on several occasions, but most commonly, it would just try to overpower its opponents. This was the case with the Bear, the Comanche Warriors, and the French Voyagers. The quintessential moment of it using brawn over brains was in its battle with Naru. Despite having her pinned, the Feral tried to use brute strength to cut through rock with its bladed shield in order to decapitate her. Instead of persevering with this approach, a more skilled fighter would surely have used the opportunity to switch to another attack and end the fight. Ultimately, its reliance on brute strength saw it outsmarted and killed by our small underdog rookie hunter. So if the Feral made errors like this against Naru, how would he fare against an experienced combatant like Craven? As a master of numerous armed and unarmed forms of combat, Sergei has developed his own savage style of fighting that is based on his previous battles with deadly animals. He has hunted almost every beast on Earth, which is something the Feral struggled with. Furthermore, this seasoned fighter has managed to overcome stronger opponents like Vermin and even Spider-Man by utilising fighting skill as opposed to brute force. He also defeated the more powerful Tiger with his nerve strikes and pinches, which would certainly serve him well in a fight with the Feral. Craven specialises in fighting large predatory animals and stronger opponents than himself. As a result, I can certainly not see him losing a fight to Naru under any circumstances. Craven easily takes this round by 10 points to 8. This round looks at the mental fortitude of each fighter and how they keep battling under adversity. During the events of Craven's last hunt, Sergei took multiple punches from Spider-Man and just goaded him on into continuing. He also endured Vermin's onslaught, but refused to lose in order to prove his superiority to Spider-Man, who could not defeat Vermin alone and required the help of Captain America. Craven seems to have no quit in him, but what about the Feral? 
Just like Craven, the Feral always persevered in battle, no matter how hurt he was. This was the case when it was mauled by the bear, only to get up and overcome its formidable foe. Likewise against Naru, the Feral kept going no matter what damage it took, and it seemed to have no intention of self-destructing. Neither fighter seemed capable of tapping out, and as a result, they cancel each other out in this round. Both combatants score 10 points in this stalemate. For as long as I can remember, I have looked for an equal. Traps. Long range weapons. Unlike the majority of Yacha that we have become so familiar with, the Feral does not use high tech plasma weaponry and utilizes a more primitive arsenal. Therefore, I feel that an honourable hunter like Craven would leave his modern firearms behind when fighting the Feral. Instead, this weapons expert would employ his melee munitions like spears, knives and axes in order to battle his primal opponent in close quarters combat. For ranged fighting, Craven would utilise his blow darts, which possess poisons and hallucinogenics. Finally, Craven would also use his nets and traps to try to contain the feral, however this may prove futile, as the French trappers discovered. In order to trap the feral, Craven would need to use his adamantium nets. As we saw in Prey, the feral possessed a wide range of formidable weaponry, which included its cloaking device, wrist blades, separable combi stick, net gun, wrist shield, and cut clamp. Its primary weapon seemed to be its spear gun with its tracking system. Despite both hunters utilising a more primitive arsenal, I feel like the Feral's alien technology is still superior to that of Craven's. I believe that in a fight between the two, certain weapons would really make the difference, and feel that the Feral's cloaking device, heat vision and spear gun give it the edge. As a result, the Feral takes round 7 by 10 points to 9, evening the scores. Your powers against my skills. Your brain against mine. This college-educated hunter has gained the edge over stronger opponents by utilising his strategic intelligence on numerous occasions. Craven is obsessive about his missions, stalking and studying his prey for prolonged periods before engaging them on the hunt. His brilliant tactical mind allows him to use his animal-taming skills and devise elaborate traps that incorporate deadly predators into his schemes. This is certainly something the Feral was susceptible to when he was tricked into Naru's less complex traps. Craven also possesses acute senses, which include enhanced sight and hearing. However, his keenest sense is that of smell, as he is capable of tracking prey by odours alone, and can remember a variety of scents, which would certainly help him locate a cloaked Yaucha. Additionally, Craven is a master hunter and tracker whose experience in the field has seen him employ a range of hunting methods as well as develop a vast knowledge of animal habits. His understanding of the effects of medicines, poisons, drugs, plants and tranquilizers on both animal and human subjects is encyclopedic. Considering how this helps Naru defeat the feral, I feel that would also give Craven the advantage over the Yaucha. These skills have seen Craven outsmart and kidnap the likes of Spider-Man and Venom, which is no mean feat. In contrast, the Feral rarely used intelligence in battle and always seemed to prefer brawn over brains. It would charge into conflict and overpower its opponents without giving any thought to strategy. This inevitably proved to be its downfall against a smaller, weaker opponent in Naru, who outsmarted it on several occasions. This was particularly the case with the lead trapper she used as bait to lure the feral in, the herb she used to reduce her body heat, and finally, the biomass she strategically positioned to cause the predator to shoot itself with its own weapon. With all things considered, there can only be one winner in this round. This is a devastating 10-7 victory for Craven, who takes the lead in the battle. <laughs> This round looks at how well each combatant utilises psychology to gain the mental edge over their opponents. Unlike so many Yaucha, the Feral made no use of vocal mimicry and did not flay and hang its victims. As a result, the Predator did not strike as much fear into its opponents when compared to other Yaucha. The Jungle Hunter, for instance, became the stuff of folklore and received its moniker as the demon who makes trophies of man precisely because it skinned and hung its victims. Despite missing an opportunity, the Feral's mere presence alone was incredibly intimidating, causing it to become a fearsome monster. 
Its creature design, with its biomass, gave it a more horror film aesthetic, which certainly augmented the intimidation factor. The feral's fearsome appearance certainly evokes more fear than that of Craven's, however I feel that Craven makes far better use of ring psychology. In the comic Craven's Last Hunt, his insanity and obsessive nature are on full display as he shoots and buries Spider-Man just to prove his own superiority. He continues with his elaborate plot as he viciously beats and captures vermin single-handedly to compound the point that he is deadlier than the wall crawler. After believing himself victorious, Craven commits suicide because in his mind he has achieved his purpose and therefore had no reason to live. This is one better than a predator who only commits honourable suicide upon defeat. Craven does this when he has hunted his most formidable foe. It is his own disturbed mind that makes him so intimidating, and he therefore is the winner of this round by 10 points to 9. What do we have here? Some fresh prey for Craven the Hunter? Craven has killed a plethora of Earth's deadliest animals, and even snapped the neck of a criminal in Craven's last hunt. In addition to this, he dismembered a Sasquatch in a slow and agonising death. Craven is very much a hunter, and does kill his quarry, but sometimes entraps them. Therefore is Craven as prolific a killer as a predator. During the events of Prey, the Feral killed a combined total of approximately 27 victims, including the animals. These deaths were also highly brutal, and the Feral's killer instinct is one of its greatest traits. Of course, we do not know how many other creatures the Feral killed before its time on Earth, so its kill count could be far higher. I feel that the final round has to go to the Predator, as it takes it by 10 points to 9. Despite a promising start by the Feral, Craven really started to pull away after the 8th round, and created a significant lead by the end. Greatest hunter of all. Based on my 10 categories, I feel that Craven is the clear winner of this encounter, but please let me know if you feel otherwise. However, I think I would need some real convincing to understand how the Feral could win this one. I do think that there are Yaucha that can defeat Craven, but I do not think that this is that Predator. The Feral, as the title of his film suggests, has become nothing more than prey for Craven. You disappoint me, creature. This was a very unsatisfying hunt. At least you'll make a decent trophy. Please let me know which other fictional fights you'd like to see in the comments section, but until next time, it's goodbye from me. Take care.